Hey y'all, it's Coach in the Fight here. It's uh, the day before Atonement Day. Atonement Day starts this, this evening, to Atonement Day 2018. But this class is still relevant to Atonement Day 2019 and every Atonement Day until, you know, we see the sky crack or whatever. And even after that, because we're looking in the scripture, in the Holy Bible, the King James Version, we're looking in Isaiah 58 and what it says about Atonement Day. And, you know, we did a class earlier where we looked at... Um, uh, what Herman said and we looked at what Revelation said and we looked in a couple of other places and we touched around on, on Isaiah 58 but you know it's, it's worth doing a whole class on it I think um, and so let's let's see what happens verse 1 says cry aloud spare not lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins okay now He's, he's uh, I guess he's talking to Isaiah here. I'm not absolutely sure without, you know, reading the previous chapters or whatever. But, you know, he's telling to show, show, show us the transgression. Show us what we're doing wrong, right? We all want to know what, what, what it is that we're doing wrong, especially those who want to do right. That's the first thing is to recognize what, what, what where our transgressions are. So he's going to show us some, some of them here, and it's going to be related to Atonement Day, which we thought it was appropriate. So let's go on to verse 2. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways, right? As a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the, and forsook not the ordinances of God. So we seek him daily. We're going after him as if we are these people. As if we are these people who still try to keep his ordinances. As still we are a righteous nation. We're seeking him daily. He says they ask for me. The ordinances of justice, they take delight in approaching to God, okay? So now he's he he's he's talking about us in a in a good light, but he's gonna he's apparently gonna show us our transgression. So let's go on. Wherefore have we fasted? We they say, and thou seest not. Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast, ye find pleasure and exact all your labors. Okay, now, sounds like, okay, in the first part of this verse, this is us talking, and we're saying, you know, we've done all of this fasting and all this afflicting of the soul, and it seems like we're getting nothing out of it. Well, we understand that there, there it's only during the day of judgment will we, will we, you know, be held accountable for, you know, what we do on Atonement Day. That kind of leading up to it is kind of a dress rehearsal kind of thing. And he says, um, behold, in a day of your fast, ye find pleasure and exact all your labors. Now, to me, this sounds like he's turning it back on us. Where, you know, where the first part we were talking to him. But in the second part of the verse, it's like he's turning it back on us saying, hey, you're doing it wrong. He said, on, on the day you're supposed to be fi uh, fasting, you're finding pleasure. And you're exacting all your labors, meaning you're doing all your chores. You're doing everything on your to-do list. And verse 4 says, behold. Ye fast for strife and debate. Okay, so what 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 does he mean here? We're we're, strive, we're fasting just to just to keep up some fuss and and be able to you know hold hold some argument and saying that we did we did do the fast. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as you do this day to make your voice be heard on high. So he's saying there's something about the way that we, they were fasting that they were doing wrong. And he says it's not going to be like this to get our voice heard on high. Let's go on. It is such a fast that I, is this such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush? As to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast, an acceptable day of the Lord? Is, is he saying, is this what he thought we meant? Is, is this what we thought he meant? That we're supposed to, you know... Um, spread ashes on us and, you know, basically harm ourselves or, or, you know, beat ourselves down. Uh, is that what we thought he meant? Is that what we think is an acceptable day uh, to the Lord? Let's go on. Is not this the fast that I have chosen? Now, here he's about to tell us what, what fast he actually chosen. That's what this, that up there is what, you know, somebody apparently thought they were supposed to be doing. But down here in verse 6 is what we're actually supposed to be doing. He says, to loose the bands of wickedness. To undo the heavy burdens and to let the oppressed go free and that ye break every yoke. So this is the fast that we're supposed to be doing, right? Not really, you know, spreading ashes on ourselves or, you know, doing such what we're actually supposed to be helping people. You know, the poor, the, the uh, lifting the burdens and, you know, helping people out. Verse 7 says, is, is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? 
and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house when thou seest the naked and thou cover him and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. See, this is what we're talking about. The day of atonement. This is what we're supposed to be doing. There's a lot of people that's waiting on a day of atonement, but they're doing just that. They're waiting. Well, what are they going to be doing on atonement? Well, hopefully after this class, we'll know some of the things that we are supposed to be doing on atonement day. So we can get, you know, if those who are waiting for the rapture, this is what you want to be doing to wait for the rapture. Those who's waiting for something else, whatever it is, this is atonement day. If you're expecting it to be to happen on atonement day, you should be doing what's appropriate on atonement day in order to get that thing that you're expecting to happen no matter what it is you know no matter what what it is i promise you you get gifts um and and blessings every atonement day that you've done it right you know for uh, leading up until this point and you will for every feast and holy day that comes i mean that's just the way it works these are his holy days and as long as we're doing what we are supposed to be doing on these days we can get the blessings that he put there for us Right. We just have to, like I say, be doing what we're supposed to be doing. And what are we supposed to be doing? Uh, seek, see is the naked thou cover him and thou hide not thyself from thy own flesh. So that's talking about their own children to be helping your own children uh, and dealing bread to the hungry. This is the kind of stuff we're supposed to be doing. Verse eight says, then watch this. Now we're about to change gears here. Now, <clears throat> this is the way the scripture works. You always do what you're supposed to do first, and then you get blessings. Even when, you, even, even when you understand stuff, you always, you know, understand where you're supposed to be. Then you understand what blessings are supposed to come after. So look at verse eight. He says, "Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily." Okay, so we're talking about light, which is understanding. Or, you know, maybe you define light in another way, but, you know, it, it, it very well could be understanding. It will shine forth as the morning and thine health shall spring forth speedily. This sounds like, you know, we, you know, all of our, you know, ailments are being healed or whatever. Well, a lot of these feasts are, are you know, have these type of blessings where some of them you get you get rain. Some of them you get health. Some of them you get, you know, I'm sure some of them you get wealth or whatever. But, you know, let's go on. And thy righteousness shall go before thee. Now righteousness shall go before thee. Now what this is talking about, I believe you you heard the old phrase, um, a prophet has no honor in his own in his own home. Well, you know, it's because they don't recognize your righteousness. Well, you know, let's get atonement right. Maybe some of that will change. He says, the glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. Okay, this is some of the stuff we get for for getting this thing right. And he ain't finished yet. Look at verse 9. Then shalt thou call and the Lord shall answer. What? There's a lot of people out here wondering why the Lord don't answer prayers. Well, it's because we ain't doing what we're supposed to be doing. Here, here it is right here. He says, then shalt thou call and the Lord shall answer the prayers. Thou shalt cry and he shall say, here I am. Here I, here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke. The putting forth of the finger and speaking vanity. So if we do this, we get that. Right? This is, you know, that's just the way this is an if statement here. And here's another one in verse 10. He says, And if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then thou shalt then shall thy light rise in obscurity and the thy darkness be as the noonday. Right. So then things are going to start to make sense. Things, things, things are going to be bright in your life. You know, if we do this, if we go out and help the hungry and the afflicted souls, won't we have to do that first? Right. So, you know, praise the Lord. We got a few hours before this thing starts. We need to be finding out where these afflicted soul people and, the, you know, these hungry people, where are they? So we can we can get to doing this stuff. I'm serious. Verse 11. And the Lord shall guide thee continually. The Lord guiding your steps. How would you like to have the Lord ordering your steps and work, you know, you know, telling you which way to go and satisfy thy soul in drought? Meaning when times are hard for everybody else, you, you will have food to eat and make fat thy bones. Yeah. So, you know, everybody can use a little bit of fat on their bones, even if it's just a little. And thou shalt be like a watered garden. And like a spring of water whose waters fail not. We're talking about atonement day, guys. All Like I said, all of these feasts, all seven of these feasts have gifts associated with them. These are the ones that's associated with atonement day. So we get these right. This is what we can expect. Look at verse 12. And they that shall be of these shall build the old waste places. 
Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairs of the breach, the restorers of the path to dwell in. So, the, the this this is this is what we get for for atonement day, right? Now he's going to get into the Sabbath day here, and it's kind of important too. But this is what it, it, we gifts we get for atonement day, and I may say the Sabbath day part for for another class there. But now, better yet, it's only a couple of verses. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and finish this out. He says, "If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, if thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shalt honor Him, not doing thy own ways, nor finding thy own pleasure, nor speaking thy own words." See, if he's, this is an if statement. Verse 13, he said, this is talking about the Sabbath day. And the other one is talking about atonement day. But watch the gifts associated with the Sabbath day. If you were to get this one right, I promise you all of the, all of the feast days and all of the commandments and everything have, have gifts associated with them. But verse 14 says, then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord. Well, you know, there's people who out here who do not take delight in the Lord. Well, they ain't taking delight in the Sabbath day. And I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth. You feel, a lot of people feeling like they in low places. Well, the Sabbath day to use in a low place too, more than likely. And feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Right. So if we want these blessings, guys, we just got to get right. We got to get right according to the Sabbath day. We got to get right according to the atonement day. Hermes Academy. Power, patience, continence, and faith. We teach virtue.